What's up, guys, and welcome back to Spoken Truth. Let's dive into the Boston Celtics now. Now, obviously, we just talked about the Miami Heat. We realized that the Boston Celtics are in a hole. They're down 3-1 against the Miami Heat. Um, they've won game four, and now they're going back home for a game five. Taz, a lot of people has, have asked me over the course of this, this series, like, what's wrong with the Celtics? What's wrong with the Celtics? I, I can't tell you what's missing with the Boston Celtics. Like, but I feel like something is. I just can't identify exactly what it is. Um, so hopefully you can help me figure that out because my question is, has the Celtics reached their ceiling? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to to say. This current team, like, regime of the Celtics. Right, yeah. I mean, it seemed like last year was their best chance. Um, I'm not saying if this team doesn't stay together that they can't win a championship because I really do believe in the Brown-Tatum duo. Um, and I think this team has a lot of nice pieces around them as well. Um, but I think they've definitely hit a roadblock. It seems like um, there are a lot of factors in the in why they got down 3-0 in this series, but it's never a good look when you get embarrassed like they did in game three yeah. um go from down double digits i think at the half but you're still kind of in the game and then by the end of the third quarter they were getting pretty much laughed off the court they quit they yeah, quit. yeah they, it seemed like they quit on each other it seems like they quit on their coach um and that that type of performance is the one that can break up teams because you know a front office will see a, a, a game like that and that's the reason they pull a trigger on a Jalen Brown trade, or that's the reason they decide to fire Joe Missoula after just one season, or that's the reason that they give up on, you know, a bench player that had a good year, but hasn't been good recently. You know, those are the type of games that you pretty much can't have, especially at this point in the season. I mean, you're facing a must win down 2-0 game three, at least show some fight. And they didn't even do that. Mm -hmm. um, now, the reason for that, I think there's a lot of reasons, like I said, um, to me, their, their two man lineup with Robert Williams and Al Horford has been really great in the past. It hasn't been as good in recent weeks. Um, Malcolm Brogdon and Derek White, they had really good seasons, um, as kind of catalyst for the second unit and stepping up when the first unit needs it. They both haven't been very good the last few weeks. Marcus Smart has been the sole leader of this team for pretty much his entire time there. Obviously, he was there before Brown and Tatum, and he's kind of carried that throughout their time, even though they're obviously the better players. He seems like he's kind of hit a wall. He's not the defender he used to be. He's not great on offense in certain games, and yet it still seems like he's he's the one with the ball in his hands late in the game. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It seems like there's a lot of reason for it. But, I mean, you can't. You also have to give blame to Tatum and Brown. Um, they were downright bad in game three. They took a combined one free throw attempt, I think it was. Um, which is just showing that they didn't have the aggression that they needed. Um, and they combined to shoot like one of 14 from three of that game. Um, so even though the shots weren't falling, they just continued to settle. Um, and I think that team has a lot of blame to go around. Um, a lot of people are just trying to put it on Missoula, um, trying to put it on, you know, we've heard it for years that Tatum and Brown, that, you know, they're not, they're not the right duo that you got to trade one of them. Most people have been saying you had to trade Brown for the last couple of years. I'm not saying that's the case, but those guys have to take blame for that because they haven't been good. Um, and they, they are a reason that they're down three, um, one. Now we, we, we talked about, you know, they have a chance to come back from this three, one deficit. Maybe they can. Um, but to me, it's just been kind of a pathetic performance. Um, game three was really disappointing to me, not as a Celtics fan, but just as somebody that roots for good basketball and for teams not to break up, you know, in kind of bad instances, I don't want to see Tatum and Brown go down, you know, on a sinking ship and then Brown gets traded and, you know, you kind of blow it up. I don't want to see that. Um, but like I said, when you, when you kind of get embarrassed like that in game three, it's hard for teams not to start going to those decisions. This this the Boston Celtics, I think they have a lot of internal issues going on with this team. I do think this team has reached their ceiling, though. This regime of you know the team of the brand, the, the Tatum and the Brown duo. Mm -hmm. Um, there I think their prime opportunity was last year when they got to the NBA finals. 
Uh, you can make an argument that they have the better team when they face against that's going to stay Warriors team. They just didn't have the better player, you know, and sometimes it takes a great player to upset a great team. If going back to that finals, the Warriors had, according to ESPN, a 14% chance to win. So Boston was favorite immensely in that series. Um, take, take, ESPN, which you will, you know, take over the grain of salt, however case may be. But what I do know is what I do know is we could talk about the percentage or whatever the case may be. But what I do know is I, I know facts. In the first three games of this series, Brown and Tatum shot seven for 40 from three. That is abysmal. Like that, that's not going to win you championships. That's not going to win you games. I don't know what it is, is but this team, I can't, I can't put my finger on. I've been trying to figure out it for three years now. This team is obviously missing something. I, I don't know what it is. I can't describe what it is. I don't even know what type of player it, it could be. I don't know if it's a, you know, a change in scenery. It, I don't know if they need to get together like to go like kumbaya, whatever moment. I don't know what they need to do, but this team, it just seems off. Like it's been, it seemed, even when they went to the finals, I believe it seemed off. Like, I don't know how much the Tatum and Brown duo, I don't know what it can correlate to. I don't think it's a duo that can win you a championship. I don't think those two can win you a championship as the presently constructed as the duo of that organization. I do believe that, Brown being frustrated that he's constantly in trade rumors has a lot to do with this. He was in it, you know, last offseason. He was in it in free agency this go around. He was in it last go around. So he has been talks. And no matter what an organization say to you, no matter what Jason Tatum will say to you, you hear that stuff. And you can't say none of that is true because it's been speculated for so long, you know, that – I don't know. It has, I think it has something to do with this team chemistry. I don't know. I don't know if they want to play with each other, play for each other. Game three, they just flat out quit. They were abysmal. Tatum was abysmal. He scored his first points in his series in game four. That is tragic. Like that is crazy for a superstar. We're calling him a superstar for him to pour on a performance like that. This is not game seven against Philly. This isn't, this isn't that where you can score 51 when the team was willingly looking for you to do that. I think the Celtics play cocky. I think they play arrogant because they believe that they were a better team. They are the better team, but I believe they, they thought they could just cruise rock through Miami and Jimmy Butler. They kept receipts. You know, and I don't know where they go from here. I don't know if Joe Mazzula, I'm on a record last um, segment. I said, I don't think he should be on a hot seat. I don't think he should lose his job. Their defense is not the same. Uh, you Obviously, something is wrong. You know, I don't know what this team do. I don't know how they fix it. Um, it's not the same with the, it's not with the same, like with a team like the Warriors, where the Warriors know what their issue is a punch for their locker room apart, obviously. It's, it's like it's like the silence is a, a more killer. Like it's, it's, they, it's killing this team in silent that we don't actually know what the underlying issue is. We just know that there's something. So when people ask me like, what does Southern need to do to fix it? I don't know because I don't think they know. Like, so how do, how do we know? I don't think they know what the, what the root of the issue is. So how can us as, you know, spectators think that we know what it is? I just know it's something seems off. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the report from Kevin O'Connor a couple of days ago that um, I forget the exact word, word um, but it was like they're tired of like acting like they like each other pretty much. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, when you start to hear those type of quotes and reports, it kind of seems like they've just kind of wore themselves out. You know, Tatum and Brown have been together for like five, six years. Uh, Marcus Smart has been there for even longer than that. And it seems like it's just kind of been too long and they've just been through too many things and it's time for a change. Um, now, I do disagree with you that I think Tatum Brown duo can win a championship. I mean, I thought um, at a point last season, you know, I think going into that fourth quarter of game four against Golden State, 
I was like, Boston looks like they're going to win this series. Um, I mean, they were one quarter away from going up 3-1, and they probably end up closing it out in six if uh, if Curry doesn't absolutely take over in that game four fourth quarter. Um, so, yeah, I do think that, but I, I don't think this specific team can win a championship. Um, I think you're going to have to move Marcus Smart or you're going to have to find another guard um, that can come in and, you know, do a lot of the same things that Smart does, but probably defers to Tatum a little bit more. I think if Brown continues to develop as a creator um, instead of, you know, mainly just being a scorer, I think that can be something that helps them develop into, you know, take that next step. Um, but it, it's hard to say that when it's, when it's, when it seemed like last year was such a good chance. And then this year, they're not going to get close to that. Go ahead. So you're not a proponent, proponent of training Jalen Brown. I'm not, I, I think, I think you do make changes this off season, but to me, that's not the one that I would make. What okay. about you? Fair enough. So you're the general manager of the Boston Celtics. Okay. And the Portland Trail Blazers call you and say, we give you Jalen Brown and some pieces if you send us Damian Lillard in return, you're not making that deal. I'm not. I love right. Damian. I love Damian as a player, but wow. he's a lot older. He's been off multiple injuries. Um, and Jalen Brown is is a bigger player. He's um, I think he's got you know more years left in him. He's not a better player currently, but he's not far off. I mean, Jalen Brown's a top twenty player in the whole league, um, and he's one of the best isolation scorers that we have. So yeah, I wouldn't make that trade. Um, I can see I can see why you'd be enticed to do it. And I think let's say they did make that trade and they had to give up what Brown, probably one more piece and then like a pick or something. I think I think Celtics would have a chance to win a championship next year. Um, but I think if they keep Brown and they make a move, you know, with Smart or they get rid of Williams or Horford or something like that, I think they can win a championship like that, too. So, I, I mean, I can see why you'd want to do that deal. But I think that. I don't know if it'd get them any closer to a championship than they already are. I, I just don't feasibly know how they can get better than without adding a superstar. You like, don't think they added like a a really high level point guard like that, that could be like their you know third best player that that like would who? make a difference. Like who? I'd have to look at who's available or who they could potentially trade. For. You know, if they could trade Marcus Smart and get a player like that back, then yeah, I, I do think that that could be the difference. But I mean, whoever that player is, it, it's hard to put that, put the name on it because this free agency class is not good. Um, and I don't know if the Celtics have a lot of flexibility on their roster. I, I, I don't, I just, don't, I don't know if the, the point guard is the end all be all of the Celtic success. Mm-hmm. Like Grant said, I think they need a true, a true point guard. Um, but what is a true point guard nowadays? Yeah. Um, maybe you just need someone better than Marcus Smart running the point, you know. But I don't know how this team can get championship level better in, in the Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum era without moving one of those pieces. I don't know. Malcolm Brogdon is probably the best piece you're going to get. That's not a a championship level piece without giving up, like. Uh, like you said, like a Marcus Smart and a Williams and a Howard Horford giving up like pieces to that puzzle, that that core that you already have. I think if you take that away and you're adding someone in return, I still don't think that makes you make you uh, that doesn't make you a championship level team if you're not adding a borderline superstar. Like if you tell me that all of a sudden now they're going to add Paul George to their team. And they're getting rid of Marcus Smart, and they're getting rid of Al Horford, and they get rid of Williams. Well, I'm gonna say I don't still don't, I still don't know if that's a championship team because you're getting rid of something that you will. You're getting rid of your size, or well, something that you have, your size. So I, I don't know what move they feasibly can make that will put them in my eyes as a championship level team again. That's why I believe their ceiling has come and gone. So does that mean you would trade Brown this offseason? I would trade Brown. Okay. It, I, it, I I don't know if I would do a, this off season. I I because I don't again I don't know what you can feasibly. I mean you don't have to worry about free agency. Um. I don't know what I I don't a team out there would it, would a team like Toronto use him? 
and like you know maybe get Pascal Siakam in return. I think Pascal Siakam and Jason Tatum could be a good duo. Um, I just don't know. I, I still don't think that's a championship team. So I just don't know what deal you can make. I, essentially, you're not getting Steph. You're not getting LeBron. You're not getting Kevin Durant. You're not getting Luka Doncic. You're not getting Nikola Jokic. You're not getting top players in this game. I don't see how you can improve your roster that dramatically to be a championship team again. Say they get James Harden. Does James Harden make them a championship team? I don't think so. Probably not. You keep Brown and Tatum? Like, I, I don't think that makes them. What if they get Chris Paul? I don't think so. Like, yeah, They might be better off, but I don't know if it really takes that next step. Yeah. So I, I don't know how they can elevate m- more than what they already have without giving away significant pieces, key pieces to their team. I, I, I just don't view them as that team again or anymore. So that's why I believe their windows closed. Unless you tell me that they can pull off a, a, a situation where you send, you send Jalen Brown. I, I don't even know. Like I can't even say Clay Thompson, but Clay, because Clay Thompson, he's he's not that player anymore. I, I just I, I don't know what works for them, essentially. Well that that uh Damon Lillard trade that you mentioned, would that be something that you would do? I would do, but I still don't know if that's a championship team. But I'd be like, I believe it gives you a better chance than what they have now. You know, I th- I think Damian Lillard and Jalen Brown, D- Damian Lillard and Jason Tatum give you a better shot at winning the title than Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Well, what if it's not the superstar that they that they make a trade for? What if they kind of go the other way and trade Jalen Brown to you know, it could still be Portland or Houston or Charlotte, you know, somebody that has a top five pick and you get their pick and you get, you know, a solid player. Like if it was, if it was Portland trade Anthony Simons, um, you know, in the third pick and maybe one more piece for Jalen Brown, would you do something like that? Or maybe something similar with Houston? I would, but. You still don't think that makes them a championship team though? No, no. I, I don't, I don't think. N- I don't think anything will make them a championship team So other so, than trading for a superstar. Like I think because I think they've reached their max abilities with each other because of that, it's going to take a player of that magnitude to put them over that hump. Like, so I believe they're at a ceiling right now where they were a championship level team. I believe the, 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 the best that they can get when I'm talking about a championship level team, I'm talking about a team that can win a title. Like, I'm I'm not saying you can't go to a finals, but I'm saying your team is not good enough to win a finals. So that's what I mean by they reached their championship. They reached their max mm-hmm. because you can get to a finals, but somehow every single year you can't get over the hump, can't get over the hump, can't get over. the. Hump. So that's what I'm saying. Like they presently constructed, they cannot win a title. So I'm not saying they can't get to Asia Conference finals, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been proven that if this team stays together, they're going to compete for, you know, mm-hmm. being a top three seed and probably a berth in the conference finals every year. Like, yeah, they've been in the conference finals, what, four times with Tatum, five times with Brown. So they're going to be in the discussion. Mm-hmm. But I do agree with you that maybe they've already hit their ceiling. Now, let's say that they that they try and make a trade for a superstar this summer and they can't find that deal. Would you just run it back with Brown and hope that you can develop? Because I don't I don't trade anyways that would do that. So why not just bring it back and hope that you can take the next step organically? I think for one, Eastern Conference Burst shouldn't excite you anymore when you've been to five of them. Yeah. Uh at some point in time you want to win a championship. Um, so that's I think that's the, the to me their ceiling is the finals. I there I don't think their ceiling is winning the finals. Um, but I don't think you poke the bear and until you know definitively that you can trade him. Mm-hmm. Like leave him alone until you definitively can trade him to a, a team that you view as a better situation for, for both parties. So don't be in rumors about hey, you know, looking and shopping around and then gotta bring him back because that's starting more of the issue. Yeah. You know. When you find something, try to keep it in house. I know it's hard nowadays. Try to keep it in house until you can get a deal done and then get it done. You know, 
because it's already tension as it is right now. So if he's in trade discussions and, you know, they're talking about that, maybe you're going to this team and this team, and then all of a sudden, like, you got to be right back with the squad the next season, it's going to it's going to be the same, you know, what it is now, the tension and everything that's, you know, happening. Yeah, and I don't blame Brown because to me that would be really hard to deal with year in and year out. I mean, going back to last year, obviously he was in the discussion with the Kevin Durant trade, um, which was Brad Stevens, you know, having those discussions. But when Danny Ainge was running the show just a few years ago, um, Jalen Brown was being discussed in Kawhi Leonard trades, Paul George trades, Bradley yeah. Beal trades. So, I mean, it's not something that's a one-time thing. It didn't happen for the first time last year. This yeah. has been something that Brown has had to deal with pretty much his entire tenure uh, with the Celtics. So I can see why it'd be frustrating. We've yeah. heard some some quotes from him that have kind of shown that he's not exactly happy with Boston. He's not a fan of a lot of the Boston fans and their rhetoric that they have. So I can see why Brown is frustrated. To me, I would continue to build around them and maybe make a trade, like I said, with Marcus Smart or one of the other starters um, and try and make improvement elsewhere. But it, it, I mean, it's really hard now because you've you've had a year where I think the entire year they thought that they were a championship contender and mm -hmm. they get within one series of it and they pretty much get embarrassed. So yeah. it's going to be kind of a wake up call. Um, we talked about it earlier, but the other side of this is Joe Missoula. Um, I said that I feel like if they, I think if they lost game four, I think he was going to get fired. I think if they lose game five, there's still a chance. Um, you said mm -hmm. that you don't think he's on the hot seat. So I, I kind of want to get your take um, on what you think of his season in general um, and where the Celtics go from here with him. I, I think because the way that he was brought in and how he would just kind of like this scandal happened and everything, you, you know, you kind of re got replaced by that. So it's kind of like bringing in, he's, he's young, you know, he's 34 years old. I just think, that we can't put this situation completely on him. Yeah. His superstars have not shown up. You know, Jason Tatum has not shown up in, in these play in this series, essentially. So I can't just put all of the everything on him for the Celtics potentially losing this series. He can only coach them so much. The players got to be willing to go out there and play. Now, maybe I don't know if they're just tone deaf. I don't know if the, he's they're they're not hearing him. They're not, you know, they're tuning him out. I don't know whatever. I don't know if the age thing is a problem. I I don't know exactly what that internal issue is. Um, so I I'm not saying that there isn't a coach out there that might be better suited, because I believe there's several coaches that probably will give the Celtics a better chance to be successful than Joe Mazzulda can. Um, but I don't think because of the situation that happened in the offseason and because how the season's turned out, because of everything combined, you can you can make an argument that that is grounds to fire him because of everything. But I think that it can actually work in the opposite for him and be a reason why all of this is a reason why he gets another chance because of the scandal, because of the, he, you know, he didn't get a, you know, a, a, a feel like a full off season, a full, you know, a, with the team and, you know, go through all the OT, like the training camp, everything. Like he didn't get a full season with this team. And that could be, to me, that's probably his only case of keeping his job is that, Hey, like I didn't even get a full year of my squad, you know? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, I think he got hired in like August. So, I mean, just a couple months before the season. Mm -hmm. um, and for the record, I don't think he should get fired. I mean, if there's anybody to blame, it's the Celtics front office for hiring him in the first place. I think Joe Mazzulli, well, not, not that he doesn't deserve it, but what yeah. did you think when you hired a 34-year-old coach that never coached in the NBA? Three years ago, he was a G League coach. He was only on your, your bench for one year. And he wasn't, he wasn't the top assistant. He wasn't the second assistant. At best, he was their third assistant last year. And I think he was even lower than that. And mm -hmm. you expect him to go in with a team that's hoping to contend for a championship? What do you think is going to happen when he goes against Spolstra or when he goes against Doc Rivers, who's been coaching for 25 years? Yeah. He's, he's likely going to get out coached. I mean, you kind of had to know that when you hired a 34-year-old that has never been at this level. I mean, Ime Udoka was a rookie head coach last year. But he was an assistant coach for the Spurs. He was an assistant coach for the for the 76ers and the Nets. Like 
he was a decade long assistant coach that also had played in the NBA for like a decade. So, I mean, not all rookie coaches are created equal. And Joe Missoula was really thrown into a difficult situation, not only because of the scandal and the expectations, but just the fact that he's 34 years old. I mean, doing something he's never done before. So I, I think they should hang on to him. I actually think Joe Missoula is a pretty good coach. Like he's made mistakes throughout the year. He's he's failed to make adjustments at times in the playoffs. I think some, some of his decisions um, haven't been great. I think he's been a little too hesitant to make changes at times, um, whether it be replacing uh, Robert Williams when that too big lineup wasn't working, staying with Smart a little too long, even though I think the other guards can give you some better options at times. I think his late game decisions haven't been great. I think his offensive sets need to be better in closing time. It seems like a lot of the time they pretty much just give the ball to Tatum and either say go ISO or we're going to go with a high pick and roll. And there's really nothing in between. I think I think Jalen Brown needs to get more touches in the fourth quarter. So there's a lot of things that you can criticize Joe Missoula for. Um, but it's his first playoff run. Did you think it was going to go perfect, that he was going to have no mistakes, yeah. that he was going to be able to come in and help your team win a championship, even though he's never done it before? I mean, it takes multiple playoff runs. Like, it take it, even Spolstra, it took him a few years. I mean, and, and he had, a, and he had a, a, a team that was ready to win a championship, but I don't think Spolstra was at first. Yeah. I, I think Joe Mazzula deserves a couple more years, but I don't know that he's going to get it. I think we've seen a year in and year out in NBA in all sports. The the coach is pretty much the first one to go. Yeah. They go coach or they go, you know, one of the high level players that isn't the best player. They go GM. They pretty much go, you know, every direction they can until it comes back on themselves. Yeah. I think the Celtics are going to look at Missoula, especially if they get blown out in game five. And I think they're going to say, you're not ready we're going to go get a coach that's been here before. I think that that's a real possibility. I'm not saying that's the, the move that they should make, but I think it's a real, I think there's a real chance that that does happen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Um, there's not really much for me to say about that. I think you put that, Laid it out adequately. Like that, like this this team, I, I get from that standpoint of potentially why they will let him go. You know, and obviously we know that superstars never get let go first. You know, they get rid of the house before they let go of the superstar. Um, so it I guess we just have to wait to see what happens. But you know, I think you know, he deserves another year, full year, um, because of everything that went down, but like you, like you said, depending on how this how this turns out, they lose in five, you know, based on the play and how the team looks and how, you know, how the mindset is right now with this team and everything that's going on internally, you know, he could be out. He could be the scapegoat. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, we, I just want to ask you this one question that we can get off of the Celtics. Um, we talked about Jalen Brown and Joe Mazzulla potentially not being on this team going forward. If if we're saying next year, out of those two, who do you think has a better chance of being with the Celtics franchise? Jalen Brown. I think so, too. Jalen Brown. Yeah. yeah I, th I think there's a chance that they both go. I think there's a chance that they both stay. Um, but it does seem like those are the two guys that they're looking at potentially moving off of. Um, but I, I would say that it's probably more likely that Joe Mazzulla gets fired than Jalen Brown gets traded. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. You want to move off them? Yes, sir.